In this video, we're going to learn how to read both posted. So we already have our route set up. So we already have our route set up in such a way that when we create the post, it takes us to this route. I'm just going to say view route. And then it just displays our ID for us. Now we do not want it to display the ID for us. We want it to fetch that data for us. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new view and whatever data we're going to fetch, we're going to pass it into that new view and then we can display that data. Okay. So simply what we're going to just do here is I'm just going to get rid of this response and send and I'll just make a kind of like a read operation here. Okay. So to do that in Express is quite easy. All you need to do is just to say blog dot find by ID and that's all. And of course we're going to pass in the request that params ID. So this is going to just fetch the ID that we pass in here. So I'm just going to say let blog equal to this parameter. And since this might at least take a while, I'm just going to make this and a sync uh, function and then I'm going to await whatever response we get from here. Now let's say if we get something, let me say if, you can say if blog and then I'm going to render, I'm going to render a JS file, I'm just going to render a JS file called show and then I'm going to pass in the value of blog okay i'm going to pass in this value into that and if we don't get blog if blog is null else i'll just redirect i'll just redirect to the home page so we need to create this view so go to my views folder create a new file show.ejs what i'm going to do just to save our time is i'm going to paste in some HTML code I already have. So I just pasted that and then we just saved and I'm just going to create a new blog post. Uh, I'm going to call it title three, say author number three and say this is a description number three and I hit save. So that brings us to you can see the route blog slash then the ID. Now this is just a normal HTML template. We haven't started reading in the data from here. So I'm just going to make this smaller so that we can see uh, these two things all at once. Okay, that's better. So this is just our normal HTML here. Uh, what we're going to do is from our blog route, we passed in this blog parameter. Here, there's a blog object and we can make access to that in here. So our blog title, uh, let's see where we have that blog title. So I just go to where I have my blog title. Um, it's here, H1. So I get rid of all of this and what I'll do is I'll put in the EJX syntax, which is, let me just put a space, uh, less than sign and then you put the percent and then I'll put it equal to because I want to render a text so I'll say blog title and don't forget to close your EJX so if I just refresh this page it says title 3 now what this is doing is that it's using this parameter that was passed in the URL it's being used to fetch that data you can see it says title 3 and we also need to put in the auto name so I can just copy this EJS that I already had here and look for where I have auto name auto name here and I'll see auto if I save that I refresh you see it says auto number three uh created that is going to be uh time created if I save that okay it says something very long you can say the time there and then description it's going to be blog the description. I'm also going to do the same thing for the image. 
Now I want to make access to the image in a folder called uploads and then images. Let's see. All right, I'll just make it images alone. I think that's more logical. So a folder called uploads and we're going to make access to all our public files inside this public folder. So I create a folder there called uploads. Uh, uploads. Okay, and uh, let me take this away. So just simply add the EJS syntax here. And here will be IMG. I'll refresh. I know there's nothing that will show up. I think I don't have any image in there. So I'm going to copy and paste a placeholder image in there so that anytime uh, there's no image, a default image is being called up. So I just copy this image, nice image I took, and then we're going to use that for the placeholder image. So you can see that nicely placed here. Uh, I'm also going to do the same thing for the auto. Place this image here, save. So you can see we have all that nicely placed. Uh, I'm not so happy with the dates, the way the date is being displayed. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is, let me add it to local date string. Fresh. Okay, good. So it looks better now. So we're able to read our data from the database based on the ID. But this ID doesn't look so nice. Uh, in most websites and most applications, you won't be using this. You're using a slug so that it looks pretty in the URL. So we're going to do that. We're going to change this to a slug or have a slug and then use that slug to read data from the database. So I'm going to generate this slug by using something called Mongo slug generator. So I'll just install that to my package or my list of my packages. So I'll install that and then I'll head over to my blocks model capital B here. And among the things that I'm sending into the database, I want to add a slug. So one of the things I'll do is I'll just require that slug const, just call it slug equal to require. I want to require that mongoose slug generator. And what I'm going to use that and do is that among the things I'm sending into the database, I'm just going to add a new value here and this is from the documentation, but I'm sure that the type is going to be string. And then you can def you can specify uh, what you want the slug to be generated from. So we want it to be generated from the title. So I'll pass in the slug title. So the slug be generated from the title. We also want it to be unique so we want that each one each value is going to be unique so therefore if there is a, a blog with the same title it would make sure that they are unique and one of the ways that this mongoose log generator does that it's it appends uh some characters at the end of your your slug so i'm going to use slug padding size this is just from the documentation and what that will do is that it will limit the number of things it adds to the to the slug to make it unique so just limit that to two so what it's going to do is that each time we create a new blog there's going to be a new data of slug which is going to be generated from the title and is going to be a unique value and the slug pattern size it's going to be two. So when I save this, I'll just head back to my browser. I'll create a new blog. 
Okay, I think my server is now running. Just have to start that again. npm npm run start. Oops, what's going on? Start dev. npm run start dev. So that should start up the server for us again. I refresh okay, we have that. So I can say this is a new title. Just copy this and say some T codes. Description this is a description for a new title. Just click on save. So you can see that nicely shows us uh, our view page. But then let's let's go to our database and see what we have. I'll just refresh this. Uh, let's see. Okay, for some reason, our slug is not being updated. So I'll just go back. Let's see what could be the problem. So we need to initialize this plugin. So just above here, I'll say initialize. Initialize uh, slug. I'll just do that by saying mongoose. The plugin and then slug. So that will initialize this plugin for us. So we're going to retry. Uh, head back to our browser. Just click on new blog. Some blog title. Some T codes. And say this is a description for some blog title. Click on save. And let's head to our database. I'll just refresh this. So you can see. We have a new entry called slug. So I'm going to use this same title. You can see it tried to create a slug from the title. So I'm going to use that same title to see if we can have unique values. Some blog title. Let's go back, create a new blog. I'll use the same title, say some T codes too, and just fill here with random stuff. Click on save, set our database. When we refresh, so you can see it says some blog title dash o one so by default it's gonna be four digits but the padding reduces that to two which is what we set so that it just looks nice so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fetch the data uh with the slug instead so let's head back to our blogs routes and anytime we create a new blog what we're gonna do is instead of passing in the id as the parameter we're going to pass in the slug and uh, we go in here and say slug so since we are no more getting by id we need to change this portion that says find by id which is going to say find one and this is going to be a little bit different let me just get rid of order say away blog find one and in there we need to pass in uh, what we're looking for finding one of what one of the block slug sorry so it's going to go into the slug okay so find one is asking you that what which of the uh, object am i looking for so looking for a slug that corresponds to whatever we passed in so request the params the slug so this will go in and pick up one of these slugs here okay so let us go back to our browser and uh, let's go back let's create in a new blog some title yeah we can just have that some title uh, any author any description click on save so you can see that url is now our slug and it still fetches that data for us very good so we've been able to learn how to fetch using id read data was a read data using slug which is kind of like a neat way of doing stuff and not just knowing how to use slug we can also use other parameters to find what we want we can decide to find one item of uh let's say image of title so you put you put in the uh the, the object you're finding you're looking for here we're looking for just slug and then we're passing in the the parameter which is anything that comes after this slash here which is also equal to the slug so in the next video we're going to learn how to update these values in the database 
and the subsequent one will learn how to delete and how to update, uh, upload to Heroku.